Welcome everyone and thank you for joining our presentation today. My name is Daniele Fofano and I will present our paper Robust Ensemble Adversarial Model-Based Reinforcement Learning. This work was done at TU Delft in collaboration with my master thesis supervisor Franz Oljuk and Jean Kehe. I will start by briefly introducing core concept uh, about uh, reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, the agent learns by interacting with an environment. More specifically, at each time step t, the agent will observe a state s and choose uh, to play an action a and obtain a reward r and uh, observe a new state uh, as a consequence of its action. Uh, this process is repeated until reaching a terminal state. This can be nicely formalized as a Markov decision process or MDP. An MDP is a tuple consisting of five elements, a set of states, a set of actions, a transition probability function, a reward function, and a discount factor gamma. The objective of a reinforcement learning agent is to find the policy maximizing the state or state action value function. This policy, pi star, is often referred to as the optimal policy. In reinforcement learning, we deal with two classes of algorithms, model-free and model-based. In model-free reinforcement learning, the agent will solve an MDP by directly approximating the value function without estimating the transition probability or reward functions. In model-based reinforcement learning, the agent will learn a model of the environment dynamics and use it to generate new synthetic data to improve the policy. In this paper, our focus will uh, mainly be uh, on model-based uh, re reinforcement learning methods. So on one side, uh, model-based methods can potentially need less samples from the environment to solve a certain task when compared to uh, model-free methods. So this is indeed a nice thing to have. Uh, moreover, the agent can leverage the model to plan by uh, thinking ahead and simulating multiple future trajectories and then choosing an action. However, model-based methods require uh, an additional model assumption when approximating the environment dynamics. If these assumptions are wrong, they will uh, reduce the accuracy of the predictions. Also, the quality of the model will have an impact on the solution uh, to the task. So, how can the agent learn a model? One way is to represent the transition probability and reward functions with a table, and these are the so-called tabular methods. The agent can count how many times a certain state and reward are observed uh, by starting in a certain state and picking a certain action. With this tabular representation, the agent can optimistically explore the environment and uh, then perform deep exploration. These kind of approaches have uh, PEC guarantees, and with enough samples, the model will converge to the true underlying probability distribution. However, they do not scale uh, very well to complex domains, uh, as it is uh, easy to imagine. Uh, for example, it would be unfeasible to keep track of all the state action pairs if the state, base, state space is continuous. Another solution is to use function approximation, and in this case we consider uh, deep neural networks, of course. Uh, they are very useful since they can scale up to very large and complex domains, allowing for a good approximation of many functions uh, at a relatively low computational cost. However, when using deep neural networks, uh, we are not guaranteed to converge the underlying probability distribution and the approximation error will have an impact uh, on the solution. An example of a consequence of approximation errors <coughs> are compounding errors. Since the model is used to perform sequential predictions, its output is fed as uh, input at a following iteration and the prediction errors therefore will sum up along a trajectory so that the simulated final state will not resemble at all uh, the true one, as we can see uh, in the last line of the, of the image. Another consequence are uh, misleading dynamics. 
since there are discrepancies between the model and the environment dynamics, the agent might end up overestimating the value of certain states, favoring states that are not so good in the real environment. So uh, why can't we use optimism with function approximation as if we were using tabular methods? Uh, well, that is uh, because of what we have just seen. And approximation errors can lead to an overestimation of the value function, and we cannot rely on deep exploration since an incorrect model could uh, provide the agent with trajectories that do not resemble the, the real ones. Uh, however, we can follow a pessimistic approach instead. In reinforcement learning, pessimism can be defined as uh, choosing the policy uh, acting optimally in the worst possible world. But why should we choose this approach? Because by being prepared for the worst, the agent will be allowed to learn a policy that is more robust to approximation errors. How can we uh, apply these pessimists to model-based methods then? Uh, well, our general idea was to retain multiple estimates, so models, of the world dynamics so that the agent can be prepared for the worst. Uh, however, since uh, a model could approximate very well some areas of the domain, uh, we need in some way to choose the worst model to carry out uh, each transition. And to do this, we can uh, train an adversary, uh, indeed, and the adversary can pick a model to carry out each transition in such a way that it minimizes the expected value uh, for the agent. And this is well defined by the uh, robust, robust MDPs framework. Uh, a robust MDP is defined as the classical MDP, as we've seen at the beginning of the presentation, but the transition probability P is an adversarial subset of an uncertainty set. This way, the objective of our algorithm becomes uh, to solve a maximum optimization problem. In the literature, we mainly find two types of uncertainty sets, uh, state action and state uh, rectangular uncertainty set. The difference between these two is that in the first case, so state action rectangular, uh, the adversary can observe both the state of the system and the action picked by the agent. However, in the second case, the adversary has only access to the state and is unaware of the agent's choices. In our work, uh, we will deal only with state action rectangular uh, uncertainty sets. So, in our approach, we will have an N model ensemble through which we will have access to N imperfect estimates of the real dynamics. And for each transition, uh, we have therefore N choices, uh, which is the uncertainty set uh, that we were just mentioning before. Each transition can then be carried out by an adversarially chosen model, and this way we have a two-player game. The policy of the agent will have to maximize the expected return by choosing the best action for a model chosen by the adversary, which is in turn trying to minimize the return of the uh, main agent. Uh, we implemented a tabular method where we improve both policies with Q-learning. In this case, the model is probabilistic, so it is uh, an ensemble of deep neural networks predicting the distribution over the next state. But we also implemented a policy gradient method to scale up to more complex domains. In this case, we improve the agent policy with PPO, proximal policy optimization, and the adversarial policy with reinforce. Uh, the model in this case is deterministic, so it is always an ensemble of deep neural networks, but uh, it's predicting just the next state. We also implemented uh, an ensemble baseline without any adversary, where the model will output the average of the outputs of each network in the ensemble. Uh, here we present the serial code of, the, uh, of our algorithm. We can see that uh, it proceeds as a common uh, reinforcement learning uh, model-based algorithm where we first collect observations from the environment, then we update the models of the ensemble using the gathered samples, and then we update the main and adversarial policy 
using the ensemble of models. We implemented an epsilon random adversary so that with uh, probability epsilon it will choose a random action instead of the uh, greedy one. And this way we can improve the adversary exploration process. We performed experiments in the grid world environment using the tabular method described before. Um, a graphic representation uh, is uh, provided on this slide uh, of the environment. The agent must reach the goal state uh, from the starting point without falling into holes on the ground, which are the black tiles in this case. So using a tabular method allowed us to observe more in-depth uh, the choices of the adversary. Here we can see the transition probability distribution approximated by the models in the ensemble, which in this case were uh, three, uh, in the figures A, B and C. Uh, we see that none of these uh, accurately represent the true one in figure D. Uh, and in figure E, we can see that the adversary is choosing model zero to carry out the transition, which uh, uh, makes sense because it is the only one with a higher chance to push the agent into a hole, which is the uh, third tile of the second row, if we uh, see here in the image the tail number six, time number six, is a hole uh, <coughs> and, the, and the model zero is the one with a higher chance to push the agent in there. So by inspecting the average reward obtained by each instance of our algorithm, we can see that uh, they behave more or less in the same way and that they learn faster than the baseline in the first iterations while converging at the same value in later stages. Uh, this is actually expected since the first iterations are the ones with more uh, inaccurate models. As the number of samples grow, uh, each model will become more and more accurate, uh, converging to the uh, same solution. And so there would be a, a smaller difference in performance between the two kind of agents. We also performed experiments in the Cartpool environment where we have a continuous uh, state space. We can see by the plots that, uh, again, all the agents perform in similar ways with uh, epsilon 0.3 for the adversary uh, reaching the highest final return. However, this time when we compare the performance with the baseline, we see that it greatly improves uh, the, the performance when we when we have an adversary uh, trying to uh, trying to undermine the, the main agent. Uh, finally, we perform experiments in the pendulum environment where we also have a continuous action space. Uh, again, the agents have very close performance, but they improve faster in the early iterations of the algorithm when compared to the uh, model-based, uh, with, with the plain model-based uh, baseline. So here are a few limitations and possible future work. Uh, a deterministic model for the last two environments is uh, quite restrictive and could be overfitting to the data collected by the agent. Uh, this could be improved by implementing, implementing probabilistic models, such as uh, Gaussian MLPs. Also, the state action space of this environment is relatively easy to approximate due to the low uh, dimensionality. Uh, so it would be interesting to test our algorithm on more complex uh, domains. Hopefully, uh, we will have the chance to meet at the Q&A session in case something from the presentation was unclear or if you simply want to chat about this work. Uh, I'll see you then.